You are listening to Vikast. It's a Viking thing. I've actually um I found the uh, the original uh section from the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. Sounds like a newspaper. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. <laughs> Read all about it. Um where they were talking about uh, this is what Michael used as the inspiration for setting that scene when we first see you. I'm just going to read what it actually says with my old man glasses. So here we go. This is this is the original section from the Anglo-Saxon, Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, which is the inspiration for the first time we see the monks in Lindisfarne. In this year, dire forewarnings came over the land of Northumbrians and miserably terrified the people. There were excessive whirlwinds and lightning and fiery dragons were flying in the air. A great famine soon followed these tokens, and a little after that, in the same year, as the 6th of the Ides of January, the havoc of the heathen men miserably destroyed God's churches at Lindisfarne through rapine and slaughter. Um, And that's when we first see you. We see uh, all of the monks kind of cowering in the electrical storm, and then you look out and you you see the dragon in the clouds, and it was forms. Um, And that was all inspired by this original piece that, um, that Michael read. No way, wow. I mean, that literally should that that should have been the log line for season one. And then, yeah, the the dragon boat comes out of the mist as well, and it's like this this this. All, it was all part of their prophecy, so they were, must have been absolutely terrified at this. All you know, Armageddon was coming true. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it it, it, just, it would have been absolutely terrifying. Someone coming out of a sea that you yeah, nothing had come out of that direction before, had it? I mean, it was just no, no one knew what, and none of the monks at the time then knew what was in that. It was just endless ocean in their mind and to see ships with you lot <laughs> coming yeah. on them must have been absolutely terrifying yeah i wonder <laughs> if clive clive maybe you know this because you're you're the um resident fabulous nerd vikings nerd um were the vikings really as enormous as legend has it i mean all of our cast right you, you guys were massive we were talking to kevin duran who's like six nine and clive was saying well you're you what are you clive six three six four six three yeah yeah i mean I, and and i i'm usually a tall girl i felt really short on set but i wonder if these vikings actually were so enormous so add to that george the terror of you know this these ships coming through the mist and then these i don't think people were pretty tiny back in the day but if vikings were over six feet tall they must have looked like monsters and they were hairy yeah no I, I like all of the above and five foot nine and barely able to grow a beard <laughs> it, it makes it even scarier it makes it even and scarier loving monks as well that have got all that <clears throat> silver and jewels and there's no one there to protect it there's no armed guard on the gates and that's what the vikings were used to the vikings were used to he- hearing these tales from the sagas about you know uh, we were talking to Alyssa about this. Fafnir the dragon was there to guard all of this man's riches and things. So to just walk into somewhere expecting a fight and just seeing these these men all just with their tonsures and their brown cloaks just standing around with books, it was kind of it was bizarre to them too. And then you know, so yeah. they were just taking. Uh, actually, that comes into this is how our whole story begins, really, isn't it? Because when we come in, the, the Vikings are just slaughtering monks left, right, and center. And I do remember. Um, the stunt guys had all this amazing choreography. Yeah, you're going to pick him up, you're going to throw him, and then he gets a chair and blocks, and, and then Johan just went, no, 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 no. They're just going to come in and go, dead, 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 and just make it as simple <laughs> as possible. There's no action in this. This is what's going to make it. But there's a moment where yeah. Ragnar sees Athelstan, and he's not trying to save um, some gold or some silver or some precious object. Well, it's precious to him. He's saving a book. And that's what catches Ragnar's attention. And that's when mm. the whole story kicks in. You've got the two brothers, Ragnar and Rollo. Rollo wants to kill him. Ragnar wants to save him because Rollo can sense that Ragnar's got you know, an ulterior motive, but he doesn't quite know what it is. because He's not as switched on as Ragnar. And Athelstan is the conduit to everything. Which is probably why you survived more than five episodes. <laughs> <after that one. laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think you don't get to see until it's all finished how the how the creators and Michael and the producers put the show together. But I loved the element of the show where you have two cultures meeting and we Mm. portrayed those two different languages and you have subtitles, old Norse and ancient Anglo-Saxon. And um, that was the first event like that, I guess, where, you know, the raid on Lindisfarne and then, and then seeing a wildly different culture and not understanding the language at the time there neither Ragnar or Athelstan understanding one another, but seeing something symbolic like that book um, 
kickstart a kind of curiosity in Ragnar, maybe. Um, and I'd never thought about that before working on Vikings. What would happen back then when you hopped over the channel and <laughs> saw someone in France? Like, I guess the school kid in me, in school kid history lessons, always just thought, yeah, well, they can talk to each other. Of course they can't, like... <laughs> People in France speak French (laughs) and, you know, uh, they'd be speaking completely different language. And now we know that. So we know when we go to another country now in 2021 that we're not going to be able to understand people there. But it must have been so weird for both of both parties to like land in a new land and suddenly you're making noises and sounds. But I don't understand you. What? Like, do you know what I mean? Like just language Mm -hmm. is a and yeah, it's um, I guess that's why he thinks this man's valuable to me let's bring him home and yeah the rest is history <laughs> i i remember talking to uh johan because i didn't come in till season two but i knew johan beforehand and i remember him talking to me about you george and just saying that um he i don't know if it was him or um uh, our casting our casting director but they just kept saying like george you are athelstan whatever essence you had um that you should just go on set and be yourself is that true that they were telling me that that's what they had told you just go on set be yourself play the wonderment play the lost (laughs) feeling which i can only imagine um one scene that's really coming to mind is when you poor you had to sit there and let a semi-naked Catherine and travis come out and uh you know posture and ask you to go to bed with them (laughs) i remember the look on your face that was was the first scene i shot that was the first no, scene James. you shot? That like was the yeah. first scene that I shot as <laughs> Athelstan was, okay, I've just had a circle shaved into my head. They've put this weird brown sack on me. Cool to set. Great. Okay, let's go to set. So what are we doing? What's the scene? Oh, they're both naked. Brilliant. And you want me to what? Watch them. Okay. Um, what have I signed up for? <laughs> <laughs> what is this show? <laughs> um, it was, I, I love the fact that that was the first scene that I ever shot. Um yeah, and, and and also just just <clears throat> knowing who Catherine and Travis are and their sort of you know their levels of confidence on set. <laughs> yeah, but I yeah I I didn't know them at that point. I mean, obviously we'd met a couple of weeks before, but you know you 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 don't and you don't know what people are like on set until you're there. And um, <laughs> yeah, my first thought was, I really hope they're not going to make me do that at some point. <laughs> And then they did. I remember reading one of the first episodes before it was with history. Uh, the, whatever draft I got g- given of, of episode one and two, um, because history had a lot of laws on nudity and violence and things like that, or what they could show and what they couldn't show. But the script I read, that I mean, Michael Hurst did obviously write the Tudors, which was super racy. But the one I, the one I read, I remember that scene, it was like Ragnar stood there, full frontal nudity, you know, completely naked. <laughs> it could have been a very different show, George. I know. Well, <laughs> do you, I mean, I don't know if, like, Johan would be happy me. I think you would, but I remember in that first block us trying to shoot two versions. Do you remember that? There was like, it, it lasted about a day because brilliant Johan just said, I'm not doing this, but they tried to shoot a version that would be able to be watched internationally on kind of pay-per-view cable series. Cause it, history was this weird thing. Like you said, it history channel in the U S was kind of basic cable. So it was on over 100 million households in the US or something. So it was kind of between what you're allowed to show on HBO and what you're allowed to show on network TV. And so they briefed Johan to kind of shoot a safe, nice version of of the violent and racy scenes and then do one that's like really. And I remember like on the second day of doing it, he just (laughs) had a massive hissy fit on set and was like, we're not doing this. We're doing one version. That's it. Yeah. Thank God we, we still did. ended up doing two versions, but I think what it reverted to is that they just added all the scenes that you'd have to cut for commercial breaks in the in the, oh, the, the US right. version. They were able to add scenes in for the international version, which is the right way to do it, right? You just yeah. get an extended version. But at the beginning, what you're saying is that they were going up to us, going, "Right, well, we can we can add more sex in this this version, and then we take it out away for the for the US version, rather than actually being, or well, can we add some scenes that can drive the story forward?" Which was what we did sometimes. I don't know if everyone's aware of that that's watching Vicast is um. You know, if, if you've watched the US version, there is a version out there in Europe um, that you could track down. There's probably got some scenes of your favorite characters mm-hmm. that are oh, still really? in the US version. I didn't know that that was still yeah. the case. I, oh, I thought we just shot 
one version shows how much I was concentrating. <laughs> no, there's some there's some scenes between Lagatha and Rollo that the the, the US versions have never really seen. There's about no three way. that add to the, the whole dramatic conclusion of Rollo confessing that he's Bjorn's father. I mean, I think in the US public are a bit like, wow, that came out of nowhere. But if you've watched the extended mm-hmm. versions, there's certain oh scenes God. and you're like, oh, we saw that conversation between Lagatha and Rollo and there's something there and there's yeah. a history and... That, that's wow. frustrating when that happens because that, that's happened. It, it happens throughout the show. And I don't think um, fans watching sometimes think and they get really understandably upset because sometimes things don't make sense. And then I'm going, ah, oh, but you don't know. There was so much more in the script. But for editing or time or network purposes, it does get cut out. But yeah. So that was your first scene. That was my first scene. Yeah, that was my first wow. scene. And yeah, I, the, uh, you referenced Johan. I, 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 um, I remember I. It, it was kind of the first scene, I guess, that I had to be really upset or not upset, but um, yeah, it was the raid on Lindisfarne. So it was one of the first times you see Athelstan and I had to run into a room and basically shout like, the Vikings are coming, like, oh, there's people in scary boats and they're all tall and huge. Ah! <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we did one take of it. I run in, stand on my mark and get really flustered and upset about these big scary men and I remember him just being like cut cut and he, he walked into the room and was like what the fuck was all that bullshit drama school acting nonsense just be real <laughs> lose all of that want. just come in here and just be normal dude god let's go again roll the cameras <laughs> And I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's such a good impersonation. I had a few of those days too. No, but it, it, he was totally right. Like, you know, and to your point about like, everyone's briefing to me, just just be George, because that's what this character is. Um, you know, I, I just fresh out of drama school where I trained for three years to, you know, reimagine human beings on an epic scale and do massive transformative acting work and... <laughs> And he was like, no, 